Okay, now let's take a look at an important little point. Here we see our gyromagnetic precession, dielectric inertial plane of our 2 by 2 by 1 inch block magnet, dielectric inertial plane of our 3 quarter inch neodymium iron boron. These are just steel balls up here to show the angle of movement. As you see here, and let's take a look. I have a little circle drawn out on the 2 by 2 by 1 inch. You'll notice that the magnet will draw a circle around the gyromagnetic precessional point. Now you'll notice if I move, obviously the sphere magnet will move in the direction that I turn it, but you'll also notice that it will move counterclockwise to the 2 by 1 inch and it will move around that circle of gyromagnetic precession. If I spin it clockwise, the sphere, it will move counterclockwise on the circle drawn out on the block magnet. If I move it clockwise, it moves counterclockwise. Now, if I move the sphere magnet counterclockwise, it will draw out the gyromagnetic precession clockwise on the pattern. It will never sit in the middle of that circle. You think, well, magnets attract and it should just sit perfectly there. And both of these inertial planes are what you're calling inertial planes should be level, but they're not. So, let's remove the lens from the lens experiment. And we have a circle drawn on our block magnet. You notice as I move the sphere clockwise, obviously the sphere will move in any direction I turn it. But, why won't the sphere move clockwise on the block magnet? I'm spinning it clockwise, but why must it move counterclockwise on the block magnet? And if I do the reverse, if I spin the sphere magnet counterclockwise, which of course if I spin it clockwise, counterclockwise, it's going to move counterclockwise, but what will it draw on a block magnet? It will draw out a clockwise circle. It will never sit dead center. It will only draw out that gyromagnetic precessional angle. Move it clockwise, it traces out counterclockwise. If I move it counterclockwise, it will trace out clockwise. Move it clockwise, trace out counterclockwise. Move it counterclockwise, we'll trace out clockwise. Once in a little while, it'll hit a sweet spot where it'll get outside of the circle. So do you see what's going on here? Let's just remove these. These are just for demonstration purposes only. They're just little steel balls. One of them was copper coated. So, I'm moving it, the sphere, counterclockwise, but it's tracing out. Remember, the dead center of this circle is not where the sphere will rest. That's the dead center of the magnet. It will trace out. That's our gyromagnetic precession. Now, I'm moving the sphere and neodymium. Both of these are neodymiums, okay? This is not steel. If this were steel, it would be out here. Remember, no such thing as magnetic attraction, only dielectric voidance and countervoidance. What is driving a magnet? What causes attraction and a repulsion? Or accurately, dielectric uh, voidance and countervoidance is dielectricity, not magnetism. So, why, when I turn the sphere magnet clockwise, do I get counterclockwise necessitated movement around not only not the center, but around the circumference of the center? of this little circle here. Zero magnetic precession might. Why, when I move it counterclockwise, do I get clockwise movement? No trickery involved might. You see? Once it'll hit a sweet spot once in a while, you'll have to move it just a hair. You see what's going on? Now, I'm 
spinning the sphere counterclockwise is drawing out a clockwise on the large block magnet. If I move the sphere clockwise, it'll draw out counterclockwise. Of course, right now I'm just grinding the chromium plating off of both of these magnets, but who cares? So we removed the lens, okay? No more salad bowl and two magnets, or a magnet in a sphere. I mean, a magnet in a steel disc. Here we just have two magnets. You're thinking, well, this one is just like the lens because it is spherical shape. That's not the reason, mate. Obviously, this is going, the sphere is going to move whichever way I move it. So now you have to ask yourself, why, when I move it clockwise, does it trace out counterclockwise on the block magnet? And why will it not sit at the center of the block magnet? Only on the outside circumference of this circle drawn at the centripetal point. What's the reason for that? We've removed the lens. Now we're just looking at gyromagnetic precession. We're still getting opposite movement to turn. Obviously I'm spinning the magnet and the magnet's responding. The sphere magnet is. So why must it my why must it necessarily move opposite to the direction of spin at the centripetal point where there's dielectric counteravoidance and why does it sit at the outside circumference? Well that's the question you need to ask yourself. What you think magnetic attraction is is dielectric voidance. What is driving a magnet? Magnetism is discharge. It is radiation. Okay? Dielectric inertial plane. Concentrated at, forced at, not located at. It is incommensurate. It is point non-specific. Here we see our processional angle. Just like the Earth around the Sun. To a degree. So, we've removed the lens, we've removed the salad bowl. So, now you just need to ask yourself the question, what's going on? What a crazy statement. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Well, yes, it's an age-old premise because of these objects, lodestones, and our permanent magnets attracting ferrous materials like these little steel balls or little steel bits of anything. Well, that's magnetic attraction. We know there's magnetism there. No such thing as magnetic attraction. Magnetism is radiation. It is discharge. It is a resultant from dielectricity in discharge. It is centrifugal. Radiation never attracts anything. It displaces things. Working hard on the third edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, all will be explained logically using platonic retroduction, simple induction, simple deduction, Logic, proofs, evidence. What is driving a magnet is not magnetism. A block wall is not an explanation, it is a description. Create a magnet one of two ways. Mere induction or increase of dielectric capacitance. Either way you have coherent dielectricity. Either increased or coherent. Oh, what an insane statement. That's because it is so permanently ingrained in our brains that magnets attract things and if you put like poles on like then what you have is repulsion well no you have space meeting space what you have is radiation meeting radiation dielectricity is centripetal inertial and counterspatial magnetism is the absolute opposite of that magnetism is discharge is radiation what do you think polarization means everything that defines space and massiveness in the inner atomic and the picometers in the uh, radius of all atoms what gives space definition is magnetism, is radiation. Space is a posterior attribute of radiation, of polarized fields. Polarization, radiation. Magnets do not attract anything. Well, yes, this is a magnet. Look, I can see it here. It attracts a steel ball, so you're just bonkers, mate. Well, no. That's not what's happening. It's a very simple confusion. It's age-old. It's been present now for thousands of years from the lodestone. And we all think, well, magnets attract things. But I don't understand when I put two light poles together, they seem to repulse. 
What's driving a magnet is not magnetism, okay? It's dielectricity. Dielectricity, increase capacitance, you increase the discharge. Or, you make dielectricity coherent by mere induction without increase of capacitance, and what you've done is you've created a coherent soft magnet, quote-unquote. Every atom between the nucleus and its outside radius, which is always changing and has no real defined radius, is massive amounts of magnetodielectricity. There is no such thing as 99.999% of empty space between the nucleus and the radius of an atom. It's BS. It's nonsense. It's utter bullocks. It's craziness. It's absurdity. It's absurd as what we think that magnetism attracts things or repulses things. Obviously, any idiot Going all the way back to the Stone Age, we'll pick up a lodestone and say, oh, that's magnetic attraction. Well, no, it's not magnetic attraction. It's dielectric voidance or counter-voidance. It's the lining up of the inner atomic of the steel. All this will be explained in the third edition. I explained it partially in the second edition, but I planned on making a full elaboration in the third and an expansion in the fourth edition. There's just so much stuff to add. I mean, there's just massive amounts of experiments after experiments. Videos, pictures, clips. So anyway, obviously, our magnet is rolling in the direction that I'm moving it. Right now I'm moving it counterclockwise. So now you have to ask yourself, why A, is it rotating and processing counterclockwise, I mean clockwise, around our block magnet when I'm moving the steel I mean, then the, uh, the neodymium sphere uh, counterclockwise. And why is it not at the dead center? It is tracing out the periphery of this circumference. Thanks for watching. Check out the next videos. Working hard on the book. Thanks.